Hi, I'm Todd from Far Frameworks, and today I hope you brought your dancing shoes. Because those shoes and this mustache can only mean one thing. This is the Ladisco tool from Far Frameworks. The Ladisco is a modular disc brake fixture that allows bicycle frame builders to hold the various tabs or bosses used to attach disc brake calipers to the frame in the correct position so they can tack, weld, or braze them into place. The configuration you see in front of me here is called the Disco Fever Kit. This is the top of the line, includes everything you need to support all the modern day standards that are available today. Right, let's take a look at some of the details of the tool. This is the main tool body. It's actually what's used to attach to the frame and then to the various brackets to support the different standards. This attaches to the frame during construction with another tool called a dummy axle. You can buy these from me or another company called Paragon Machine Works. I'll, I'll link both down in the description below. Uh, this is a very common tool. It's been used for a long time. It basically simulates the hub spacing of a particular frame and make sure that the dropouts are correctly spaced at that distance. And then my tool just actually mounts directly on the shaft of the dummy axle which I'll show a little bit later. On the tool on the front you can see that there's laser engraving for all the different standards. Um, another nice feature is that there's little windows in each of the bracket so when it's in the position it doesn't block that laser engraving so you can be sure that the brackets in the correct place uh, without having to remove it. To remove the brackets you flip the tool over and there's a thumb knob on the back. You just unscrew that. Uh, nice that there's a little captive washer here uh, so you don't lose, lose that. Um, and then the brackets themselves just slide out of these little pin and slot uh, precision pin and slot with the tool dowel pins. If I need to change to a different bracket, let's say I want to put on this IS. Uh, the IS is actually a flippable bracket, so uh, front and the rear are actually slightly different on the frame. Um, so this bracket allows you to do both of those standards. And then whatever text is facing up on the tool is the one. So right now I have I IS mount uh, front, so I would place this on the front uh, pin and slot there, so you can see IS front, flip the tool over, and then reinstall the thumb knob. Another feature of this tool is dummy axles actually come in two different diameters. There's a legacy one that's uh, 0.75 inches, and then a newer one that supports through axles that's one inch. This tool actually handles both of those with this removable spacer here. Um, and the spacer is actually magnetized, so you can see I, I can drop that into, into place there. And so um, this comes out if you need to do one inch dummy axles and then you install it if you need to do 0.75. Um, so that's another nice feature of the tool that, that's included. Um, and then one more thing is there are these spacers. So when the bicycle industry adopted through axle they did something a little strange. In the rear of the bike they kept everything the same even though the axle spacing became wider so on a normal bike uh, with quick release it's normally 135 and on a through axle it's 142 and they absorb that extra you know seven millimeters with uh, dropout overhangs. So if I bring back the dummy axle here, you can actually see that there's this like recess that goes into the dropouts and there's a 3.5 millimeter recess on both sides of the of the dropout which accounts for that 7 millimeters extra 142 minus 135. What that means is that you know the tool datums on the interface of the dropout in both quick release and through axle applications 
and so the disk tabs are in the exact same position regardless of what you're doing. In the front of the bike it got a little bit weird. So depending on whether you are doing 12 millimeter or 15 millimeter there's actually two different overhangs and the spec for the the disc tabs are actually based off the dropout face rather than the most inner dropout surface. So if you are doing 12 millimeter through axle you actually need to offset the disc tab by two millimeters. So there's an included two millimeter spacer and if you're doing 15 millimeter through axle you need to offset it by three millimeters so that's why we have the three millimeter spacers. Now this is only on forks remember and there is laser engraving on the front of here. It says three millimeter spacer for 15 millimeter through axle forks placed between the tool body and the bracket. So what that means is if I remove this bracket and I was doing a 15 millimeter through axle fork and I wanted to do a IS front tab on there I would put the three millimeter spacer between the tool body and the bracket and then reinstall that on the tool itself just like so. And so it's a little confusing but um, you know I, I'm here if you have any questions or, or you are unclear on this and then I tried to engrave as much information as possible on the tool itself just to make sure that these edge cases are caught and then it's a really cool feature that these just actually tuck away inside the tool body itself so you don't lose them or anything. Another one of the details on the back and this is actually where the name came from I, I probably should have started with this particular piece of information is on the back of the tool you'll see the name of, of the tool, so Ladisco, and you'll see a little paragraph that says crank the tunes and fire up the torch. Together we are going to dance around these ever-changing disc brake standards. So it's a play on words because it seems like the bicycle industry adopts a new standard every five to ten years and you know all the frame builders and, and small you know, part-time builders like myself have to adapt and change to that. So hopefully this tool being modular will, will help solve that. Um, and I'm planning on, you know, using this spacing and, and this body to support any of the new standards that come out. Uh, on the back of the tool there's also some history as well. So when, when post mount came on the scene or was adopted as a widely used standard, uh, when IS or ISO was adopted and then flat mount um, with the dates there. So these are kind of some of the details that that are just really cool about the tool and kind of set it apart. So now that we've had a chance to look at the features of the tool I, I kinda wanted to set up a configuration here to kinda show how the tool would be used in practice. Uh, this is a rear end I built, uh, the first TIG rear end. Um, so please don't judge too hard on the, on the quality of the welds. Actually, you know what? You can judge all you want. I, I know they're not great. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, this particular configuration is a flat mount 140 rear configuration. Um, I have it set up on a one inch dummy axle. This is a 142 by 12 through axle. And you can see it attaches to the dummy axle via the cam lever here. So this cam lever just basically rocks back and forth to remove tension or compression on the um, dummy axle to hold that into place. Um, another nice thing about the cam lever that we didn't cover before is that the cam lever uh, position can be adjusted by this uh, knurled screw here. So if you're having a problem and this is getting in your way and you're finding your best you know, kind of clamping force is over here, you can actually loosen this um, and then preload or unload with the thumb knob there and then clamp in a, in a different position. So that allows you to get the best clamping force in the, in the best position. Um, that, that's how it attaches to the actual dummy axle itself. Um, and then you can see I've got these two bosses that I welded on. Uh, these are flat mount bosses um, and these attach via two five millimeter socket head cap screws from underneath through the boss. On all the flat mount configurations 
don't know if you can see this, but there's actually these little wings here. Um, a flat mount boss itself has a slotted hole in it. Um, and those two slots have to be, you know, parallel to the dummy axle and then also parallel to each other. And so on my tool, the two, any flat mount configuration has these little wings um, that are machined into the bracket to, let me put this on here real quick, to prevent any rotation. So that just, you know, slips directly on there. And you can see the rotation is, is limited by those wings um, and allows you to get those parallel and set in the correct position. And so that's kind of all there is to it, depending on, you know, what type of, you know, tab you're using. This is an IS tab here. Or if you're using flat mount bosses, you pick and choose your, your various brackets um, that you need. Um, and then position it on the frame, do some grinding, welding, cutting in this particular case. I had to drive a hole saw down through these particular locations at the right position. Um, and then attach and hold it in place and, and weld those into position. So hopefully that flat mount example was helpful. I wish I could give examples for all the different, you know, tabs and bosses, but this would end up being an hour long video and I'm sure you don't want to sit through all that. Um, so the last point here, let's talk about the different configurations or, or kits that the tool can be bought in. So what, what you see in front of us here is the Disco Fever kit. Um, this includes flat mount 140, flat mount 160, flat mount 180, flat mount front. It has the backwards compatibility body, so this is the body with the spacer that allows you to do, you know, one inch and 0.75 dummy axles. You have IS front and rear, and then you have the post mount that allows you to do 140, 160, 180, and 203 rotor sizes. Now, if you remove the flat mount 180 which is uh, uh, used on mountain bikes. Then you have the Totally Groovy kit. So everything you see here is part of the Totally Groovy kit. If you remove the IS mount and the post and then bring in the flat mount 180, you have the far out flat mount kit. So this is if you're just doubling down on flat mount, this is the only standard you want to support going forward. You can save a bit of money bundling it this way. And then I do have two other bodies. Um, they're kind of in short supply now, but there's one uh, that is just for 0.75 dummy axles, so it's actually no adapter or spacer, and then one for one inch, so no adapter or spacer there. If you're only planning on using quick release, uh, you can use the 0.75, save some money over there, uh, aside from the backwards compatibility body here, or if you're only doing through axle, you can just buy the one inch if you're never going to go back to quick release um, and use the 0.75 inch dummy axle. So those are kind of the main kits that I sell and bundle these together in. The other cool thing is, is you can buy these all separately. So if you you know want to start out slow and you only want to do you know flat mount 140 on, on your first bike, you can just buy the body itself and then this bracket separately. And then as you build more frames or want to explore other standards, you can add any of these other brackets um, in at, at any other time. Um, so yeah, you can buy them in a kit, save some money up front, or you can buy things as, as you need them and potentially save some money that way too. Hopefully this video has been helpful in understanding the Ladisco and some of the features it provides. If you have any questions about this tool or any of the other tools I make, drop me a line at hello at farframeworks.com or send me a message on Instagram at far double underscore frameworks. If and when you're ready to dance, let me know. Milkshake, cue the lights. Okay, Milkshake, let's go shave this mustache.